um, just in case, I was really disappointed when so many people lost power. Where could they go? I mean, people were going to hotels. Some were trying to find friends. You know, I was lucky. I didn't lose my power, but my neighbor behind me did because you saw the branches laying on the ground and you could hear the generator at night for almost a whole week. We need to be more informed, more prepared, and the information needs to be given out to the public. Give, and, and, and not just on the internet, you know, on MLive. You know, it needs to be printed. It needs to have it always on TV and always on radio. Where were there warming centers for some of our residents in the city? You could hear some of the, uh, the locations for out the city and you hear it in maybe two places inside the city, but not everybody can go to the Red Cross or to charity outreach. I didn't find out until later that there were some schools available, some churches available. How can we help our people if we don't tell them what they can do? And this also goes to leaf pickup. I had a number of calls that their bags were not being picked up because it was already after Thanksgiving. And that was poor notification given to residents to get those bags out there. They had the bags that, you know, I know one of the problems was trying to get the residents to put them in the bag. They were complying, but we weren't picking them up. So now, as you drive through, they're probably under piles of snow now. I tried to help one resident. I went up to someone with a pickup truck, asked him if he would pick them up, and he did. But I couldn't help anymore because by then the snow was coming. So, you know, we need to be a little bit more proactive share the communication, get it out there to the public, and I think we would have a better understanding and acceptance of what we can do and how we can help each other. That's it. Thank you. Councilman Freeman, Councilman Nolden, no? Councilwoman Poplar. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a couple of things. Um, referring, first of all, to the last gentleman, I don't know if he's still here, that came up to the mic. You know, I do believe everybody has their own opinion of what we do, how we do, and the minute control that we have in this city. But I can only speak for Jackie Poplar. Over the last few days, with the weather catastrophe that we had in this city, I had some real problems. On the streets that were not plowed, I had medical emergencies with seniors that were 80 and 90 years old. And I know that there's a protocol that we have to do as far as getting paperwork to the emergency manager, Mr. Early. And no disrespect to Mr. Early, but I haven't just sat in this seat for three terms being stupid. Amen. And I knew that my people had to get to dialysis Amen. and they had to get to Hurley Medical Center. And I had a lady that hadn't eaten in three days that was 90 years Amen. old. Amen. So I took care of these people. True, I might not do much. But what I do do, I do. And I thank God that I have enough sense that I can call and know who to call and when to call. And I want to thank Mr. Howard Croft, Amen. and I certainly want to thank Ms. K. Mohammed for getting those streets taken care of so those people could get out and get where they need to be on the emergencies that they had. Now, I don't do much, but what I do, I do. Amen. Now, I don't do much, and I don't brag on it, but I'm gonna let you know this too, sir. Over the holidays, I have an annual Christmas party that I've had since I've sat in the seat. And I was blessed this year that 100 families from the second war got a turkey for Christmas. Amen. And that's never happened. Amen. And those kids, it was over 200. Thank you, Chief of Police. Thank you, Howard Croft. And I want to thank the fire chief 
for attending that party because it made a world of difference to the constituents from the second ward and from some of the other wards that were at that party. It made a big difference and it was a rough night. Hmm. Mr. Early was going to attend, it was a rough night, but he got made the determination to get on the road so he could get home. But thank you for trying, hmm. Mr. Early. Hmm. Yeah, we down and out and we might not like each other, some of us might not like each other, but we still gotta work together. And I just want to let this gentleman know, I'm sorry you're not in the second ward, because everybody that calls Jackie Poplar get a phone call back. And I've done that for the last three terms. And obviously, 600 people, over 600, that put me back in the seat believes in me. So when you come up here to talk about council people, whoever you need to single out, that is what you need to do because you don't know me. And if you're in the second ward, then let me know and we'll get to know each other. Now this is my last thing that I have to say, Mr. President. If we can do a referral to find out who's cutting these log trees, the trees down, turning them into logs, leaving them on the curb, some of them are being picked up, some of them are not being picked up. I can't seem to find out, and my constituents are calling me. So that is what I need to know. And once again, I want to thank the workers that went out there and worked 16 hours. Sure, the city of Flint, we sold everything, we laid them off, and they didn't know that God was watching all of this and turned this catastrophe into what it was. So now what we need to do is learn from our mistakes. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. And I'll make that referral through, through the emergency manager to Parks and Recreation Director on the removal. I, it's my understanding um, that the city of Flint and a, at least one private contractor is going around getting the branches that have fallen from the ice storm uh, they've got delayed, of course, because of the um, bad snow, um, but they'll continue to pick those branches up as they go through neighborhoods, and um, we'll come back in the spring and, and get the ones that are, are covered up with snow. So I, I do know that uh, that's going on. It hasn't happened in my ward yet, but it has happened in some parts of the city, and the contractor has told me where it happened. And I talked to some of the residents in that area, and, and they were out there picking up the branches. Mr. So President. I will make that referral, Jackie, and um, ask for a response. It's not the branches. No, I know. You're talking about the logs, the trees that are being cut down. Right, but right. some of these are, are not the trees where the, they no, fell off. Right. No, no, this is separate from that. But I just wanted to follow okay. up by saying that the city and a private contractor is also picking up the branches that have fallen from the ice okay. storm. Okay. For Thank the residents you. to know. Okay. Um, Mr. Mays, Councilman Mays. Yeah, first give honor to God, and I'm going to do that. I've asked God to hide me behind the cross as a preacher preach when I'm in this political seat. I don't play with God. And people can say what they want about me. They can talk about me. They can dog me out. They can do what they want. But when it comes to God, I don't play. I said God is in the middle of this. Let me explain something to you guys, and then I'm going to respond to you because I know most of you by name. I'm so glad that you stayed because without public scrutiny and without the people, what have we got? Government is a democracy. It's a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. I ain't got nothing. I've been like Job since 08. My Job experience, I mean, I worked for General Motors UAW for 30 years, made plenty of money, had plenty of cars. But in 08, I took the bow and I ran for city council. I missed it by 43 votes. And then guess what happened later? I done won. I done helped so many people win elections, mayors, judges, people in this room. Some of them sitting up here now. And I'm telling you, this is the type of person I am. I'm going to help and work for the least of them. I'm one of the least of them. I'm probably the only councilman who can give you a history of water off. No cash coming in. 
we make, from what I done found out, $215 every two weeks. That's what our check is, or that's what mine is. If somebody's more, I don't know it. Do you think I'm going to give up who I am for $215 every two weeks? I don't give up democracy for that. I don't give up honesty for that. I don't give up my God for $215 every two weeks. I don't give up my manhood for that. I know boys getting beat up in that police department over there. You got folks 67 years old. I know a man on Baltimore Street. We looking for him now. Manly didn't come in here like a god sinned legal angel. Quit beating them boys up, black folks mostly, in that jail. I'm sounding out. I don't want them black folks beat up. If they holler and they already locked up, don't beat them up. Because if you beat me up and hit my hernia, I could be dead. They picking them up walking down the street. If they went past picking them up, pulling them over, I was pulled over five times and couldn't tell you why. I done got so pissed every time I drove I had insurance. I'm going to end up showing insurance this time. I could talk about that case, but I'm giving manly respect. Quit beating them boys up over there. Send a message. I know the county run it, but y'all going to quit beating them boys up in that jail. 60-something-year-old man on Baltimore getting beat up. They say May is going to talk about it. Not only are we going to talk about it, we're going to sue about it. I appreciate Lonzo Goodman coming down here because Lonnie was with me. Been knowing him for 30 years. That's Pastor Goodman's brother, Mr. Early. And what Peter Bade talking about, emergency manager number three, that's what he was talking about, Mr. Bade. You trying to handicap me with a fraudulent affidavit. I feel sorry for Sherry and staff because the man who I seen come from in that back room with y'all the day that you and Scott and BB and them wanted me to resign, Sergeant Brady come from the back room. That's who gave me the handwritten note that I'm going to give you a copy of. And I would have asked for the video. When they told me it was a videotape,